Hi all you wonderful people and welcome to Ask Mark where I answer your scuba diving questions. I'm Mark, former dive instructor and yeah if you pop a comment down in the comments below if you use the hashtag Ask Mark uh, you'll probably get featured in next week's show. Uh, this week we are talking about gear donning, uh, lead, <laughs> rock boots, uh, compressing wetsuits, storage and cold water. Uh, so these should be interesting. Let's jump in and uh, figure out the first question. The first question comes from Gamer Nick and they ask, Hi Mark uh, and Sean if you're peeking. I don't know, he might be. Um, I recently injured my shoulder and I'm not keen on hoisting my gear up and injuring it right before a dive. Yeah. Um, when I dive with the club, I can sit in the back of the van and don the gear while sat. Do you have any tips or gear that might help with this? Uh, I see people with fold out benches for keeping gear on, but not sure if they also use them for self loading. Thanks. Uh, yeah, something, Ugh. something like that. Yeah, um, we use them fairly often. Yeah, if you have access to uh, to the back of a, a van or like a pickup that you can actually sit on, does make your life a lot easier. Um, yeah, yeah, on the uh, on on the deck of a boat, you often have something to uh, to sit down on. But if it's if it's just um, like a shore entry, yeah, the the easiest way is to literally carry it down and have it in the water why we practice our um, uh, removal and replacement on the surface. Uh, so that's quite a useful skill. Just inflate it, swim out a little bit, and then you can get into it in the water. Um, otherwise, yeah, it, I mean, side mount was um, one of their biggest selling points when they were bringing it out of caves was if you suffer with a bad back, yeah, you just sort of, you wear the, uh, the BCD, no cylinders attached onto you, you get into the water and you attach them on the water, it's much easier. Um, otherwise, yeah, just find some kind of ledge or like surface support. If they're about, just sort of say, oh, okay, I've got a bad shoulder, could you help me out? So everyone's sort of willing to help lift things up. And whilst they're like holding onto the cylinder, you're putting everything on and you're sort of pretty much upright. But yeah, if you can bring like some kind of, um, uh, platform it does make your life a little bit easier or just find like local resources around you to help you out but probably your best option is yeah in water just um, sort of jump in the water not wearing your bcd and put it on when you're actually wet Leopold Bloom asks, when diving abroad, I always feel bad about lead being released into the water as dive bases hardly ever have plastic coated weights. Yeah. Uh, do I worry too much? Are there any studies about the amount of lead dispersed? Uh, also, how about soft weights? Are they better due to the bag around them or worse because of more abrasion? That's a great question and something that I don't think a lot of people really consider in that um, I'll show you the coated lead in a second, but when you're on um, when you're on holiday and you get to the dive boat or something, they usually have a bucket of lead uh, and it's just bare blocks of lead. Um, and lead, when it gets into water, it leaches out into that water and it can damage the um, the water around it. So it is something that we as an industry really do need to um, sort of think about and uh, be a bit more uh, aware of. Um, shot lead and whatnot is a bit worse um, because it's, it immediately opens up the, um, the surface area to volume ratio and all of that moving is just creating abrasion where if it's just a solid block, it kind of oxidizes on the outside and that's kind of it. It's only when that gets scraped or something like when you're putting lead and moving it around inside of the bucket that it sort of exposes some fresh lead. This is where coated lead, um, ugh, like that, ugh, or that, um, is far better because it's not just cosmetic and, um, and preventing it from being bumped and scraped. It is completely coating the lead so that it can't leach away. Um, it has a few other benefits, but that's one of the like um, environmental benefit. If you have integrated weights, a lot of them have full on pouches. And if you actually look at the, uh, the X deep, um, uh, sort of website, it actually lists limiting the amount of lead that's leaching into the water as one of the benefits of a proper zippered, uh, weight pouch for your, uh, for your lead. So it is actually a huge benefit if it is contained in a bag. Um, 
Are there any studies? I don't know, but I'll, um, I'll, I'll list them. I'll link them down below if I do come across any in a search. But um, I, it, we are aware of it. I don't think it's the, the, sort of the highest um, on our sort of priorities as an overall industry, but I think it probably should be um, sort of moved up a little bit so that people can sort of be aware of it and, um, and yes, yeah, try and do more about it. But yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know if it's a huge environmental impact issue. Um, if I do find something, then yeah, I'll let you know down and I'll link it, I'll do whatever links I can do for you. Um, but yeah, it's good that you are aware of it. I wouldn't, not go diving because they don't have coated lead or whatever but yeah try and um i mean if you mention it to the dive center it's the old squeaky wheel gets greased the more people that mention it then yeah they're more likely to um sort of get some coated lead in Derek Theophile asks, Mark, can you talk to me about dry suit boots and rock boots? Uh, I'm having my dry suit boots removed and neoprene socks fitted, hoping it will help with my floaty feet. So I'm in the market for boots. When you have neoprene socks fitted to a dry suit, are rock boots the only option? What's the difference between rock boots and dry suit boots? And can I wear dry suit boots with neoprene socks? 99% of my diving is in England, Endap, Stony Cove, uh, South Coast, so I don't climb over rocks. Thank you for uh, keeping our smart going. Very informative, Derek. Uh, yeah, no worries. So the difference between rock boots and dry suit boots, um, these are all really vague terms and um, there's no official boom, this is what makes a rock boot a rock boot, but this is a dry suit boot. Um, dry suit boot in my mind is just something that's uh, permanently attached onto a dry suit. Um, so not with neoprene socks, it's just, it's a dry suit boot. That's what is fitted to the bottom of your, your dry suit, whereas a rock boot is a, um, uh, a separate shoe, oversized shoe to allow for your dry suit socks, your undersuit sock, and your neoprene socks underneath. And they typically have some kind of laces or Velcro or something to uh, sort of attach them so they don't just slip off. Now, could you use just a normal pair of shoes that are probably two, maybe three sizes too small for your foot? Probably. Um, but there's going to be a few downsides. Um, one of them is going to be drainage. Uh, you'll notice on a lot of rock boots, you tend to have drainage sections uh, sort of all over them. Um, the tread probably won't be too much different. Uh, the treads on um, uh, rock boots isn't anything particularly designed for scuba diving. Um, you'll often have a, a line notch. This one doesn't have one. Uh, sorry, a fin strap notch on the back. It has a little bit of a section, but I think that's more just the logo um, to hold onto your fin um, strap. Touch wood with these ones, it's never been an issue. Um, but I suppose if you really wanted to, just get a pair of, I don't know, Converse or something, throw them on, it'll probably work. Um, and is there an alternative um, if you're not going over sort of harsh, rocky terrain? Yeah, there's a few different versions of rock boots. You go for the, the really basic sort of canvas ones. They're perfectly fine. Once it's attached onto your foot, it doesn't matter too much. These ones are quite advanced. These are actually a gift from a, a friend. And it's quite nice that they're designed after a more like realistic boot so you can walk around. They're a bit more practical um, sort of in and around the dive site. And, uh, and because they're lace up up the front, they, they really do sort of follow the contours of your foot and it does move with you. So finning is very precise. Um, and yeah, the other benefit is probably what's going to help you out with your floaty feet is that you're reducing the airspace and any foot, internal foot movement. Um, so it's going to help bring your feet down and, um, and everything. And the, the main benefit that I see for it is that they, um, if this ever wears out, then I just replace that instead of having to send my dry suit off to, uh, to get repairs and do all that kind of stuff. There were some boots um, a few years back, I think they've addressed it now, a lot of the waterproof dry suit boots. Um, they only afford like instructors and whatnot. If you were walking around dive sites a lot, they used to wear out on the underside. They they were aware of the problem, so they fixed it for the next generation. Um, but these are very, very tough. It would take a lot to, uh, to sort of wear through that. Um, so yeah, but rock suit, dry suit boot, 
Now, I, I don't think there's a an official uh, sort of Oxford dictionary. This is what a rock, a rock boot is, and this is what such and such. In my mind, if it's got laces, then it's a rock boot. Uh, if it's something that's just comes fitted or like is sewn onto your dry suit, that's a dry suit boot. Um, so yeah, just double check exactly what it's for because you can you can do all of that yourself. You can fit your own dry suit boots to your dry suit if you've got the right adhesives and all that kind of stuff. It's not worth it, it's a real pain. It's better if you can get a professional to do it. Um, so you can buy the actual rock boots to be glued into a suit, so do be careful. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably look more towards rock boots because that's the kind of the industry standard term for a, a boot that goes over your neoprene socks. Caveman C asks, what is the definition of cold water? Uh, 10 degrees Celsius um, is, I believe, the industry standard of cold water. Um, so that's what our regulators are tested to. Um, they'll take them to below 10 degrees Celsius. Um, the uh, EN 250, sort of above 10 degrees C, uh, is the most obvious um, sort of representation of that. So some regulators, they can only be used in waters warmer than 10 degrees. So yeah, 10 degrees is what we kind of, the industry defines as cold water, but for like wetsuits and dry suits, no, you can't really define cold water because everybody feels it slightly differently. Um, and it all depends on the dive, you, the conditions, all that kind of stuff. So. The, the definition of cold water is 10 degrees Celsius, but that's mainly for uh, sort of regulators because the water temperature has a huge effect on, uh, on its performance and it's freezing. Um, so yeah, 10, 10 degrees. Chris Philhauer asks, does the compression of a wetsuit help with leg cramps or sore muscles? Ooh, um, no, no, it's not not that kind of compression. It's it's more, if you have a, a five millimeter thick wetsuit, it's more that the airspace, because it's made out of thousands of little bubbles in, in the actual foam material, each of those gets smaller. So instead of it like compressing into your body, it's thinning itself. It's, it's not that, kind of compression it's not like wearing a compression t-shirt or like lycra or something where it's like vacuums into you it's more the the actual material itself just gets thinner you won't notice or feel it as you get down uh, the one that you would feel is if it's a dry suit uh, we call this a squeeze um, and it's one reason why if you're wearing a membrane dry suit and you're not wearing a, uh, a particularly thick undersuit underneath it and you don't uh, sort of add any gas to the inside, that's why you can actually get bruised. Uh, I've seen some dive masters with bruises, like lines of bruise where the material folds over and because they don't add gas quick enough and they just keep descending, that airspace just pinches um, because they don't have that um, sort of cushioning undersuit underneath. It must have been a warm day. Um, so would that help? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know the ins and outs of cramp relief and all that kind of stuff. I'm not a physician or anything. I'm a scuba diving instructor. Um, but if, it, if that works for you, it might help, but it's not really beneficial. Um, the whole point is to avoid squeezes when we're diving. So adding some air to that airspace, because one, it's gonna add some insulation so you can stay nice and warm. Uh, two, it's gonna increase flexibility uh, and it just kind of relieves everything. So I don't think it's gonna be a, um, a practical way of relieving leg cramps or uh, sort of sore muscles. Daniel Burgess asks, Mark, are you saying to store your second stage regulators with the Venturi and breathing effort in the easiest breathing operation, or sorry, option for storage? I've been storing mine with the Venturi closed and breathing in the hardest effort, given that's the way I leave the water. I want to store it with less wear on the seats, so what exactly should I, or how should I store it? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so you want it in the lightest, um, sort of mode. So the whole point is that Venturi, 
I don't think Venturi matters. I can't think of why that would benefit as uh, a long-term storage. Um, so I, I wouldn't worry too much about Venturi, but breathing adjustment, you want to dial that out. So it's in the, the like easiest setting because what that does is there's basically a, a plunger on the inside that pushes on a spring. The spring is pushing the valve closed and that's the sort of spring that when you press the purge button, that sort of pushes and compresses the spring to open the valve and then the spring pushes it back forwards. Uh, it's the same thing when you stop inhaling, that's what's closing the valve and holding the, the pressure inside of the hose. When you screw the, uh, the breathing adjustment all the way in, you're basically compressing that spring. So you're putting even more tension or pressure force on that sealing surface. So for long-term storage, it's gonna be digging into that soft seat. We call it bedding in. So when you actually disassemble it, you'll see a really obvious circle um, or depending on the, um, uh, the valve that it's used. So it, it's bed in and over time, it can mean that gas can actually slip past that and you'll just find that it just continually delivers a little bit of gas, um, which can just be annoying over a dive. So um, yeah, for storage, unscrew that, pull it out as much as possible, uh, and that just alleviates as much pressure as possible from a spring. A lot of atomic aquatic regulators, they do it automatically. Uh, whenever it senses that there's no pressure in the hose, it, it kind of pulls that, uh, that sealing surface away. So for long-term storage, that's why a lot of atomic regulators, they only need to be serviced every like two or three years. So it makes life a lot, um, uh, a lot cheaper in the long run. But for yeah, a, a standard second stage, unscrew it uh, as far as you can. And that just alleviates a lot of the, uh, the tension or the, the force that's being applied onto that sealing surface. Venturi. I can't think of why or any other like second stage model where that would affect the sealing surface because it's a, it's a separate mechanism and it's only there for airflow uh, once it actually gets into the second stage. So I wouldn't worry about, uh, about Venturi, but yeah, definitely breathing adjustment, unscrewed as much as you can. And that's it for Ask Mark. A nice quick one today. Um, I try to make them as, as succinct as possible because I find myself just rambling on. But yeah, if you want me to discuss anything, if you've got any comments, questions, queries, or even corrections, because I'm not always right, let me know down in the comments below. If you use the hashtag Ask Mark, uh, it might not show immediately on YouTube, but it does sort of pop up on the, on the back end of YouTube. So I see it a lot earlier. And then I'll mention it on next Friday's show. Thank you for watching, everybody. Don't forget to head over to Simply Scuba we do sell some pretty interesting stuff uh, and yet yeah, if I do find any interesting studies on lead uh, and, uh, and sort of scuba diving how it can affect the environment I'll pop it down in the comments below thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving